horizontal TIG welding test joints are not that much more difficult than flat. But the horizontal butt joint is a lot more likely to fail in x-ray than a flat joint. So here are some tips to pass that x-ray test. Number one, make sure to file that sheared edge with a clean, dedicated file and then wipe with acetone. That's probably the most important step. Oftentimes you're going to be using a fixture like this for aerospace tests. And they have a little narrow argon trough. It doesn't require much argon. In this case, 5 to 10 CFH is plenty. You've kind of got to do a little testing, maybe lick the back of your finger and see if it's too much flow. If you use too much flow, it'll, it'll fight against your torch gas. I'm using a number 10 cup here, 20 to 25 CFH with the Jazzy 10 cup. I'm going to get tacks on both ends, and I often put just a little extra metal on my tacks, just an extra dab or two. It gives me a little extra forgiveness when I'm welding from or going to a tack to prevent blowing the end away. Once I've got the tacks on it, I set the fixture up in the 2G position, and here's a really important tip. You want to angle the torch, angle the tungsten upward. For a horizontal weld, you don't want to have it straight in or even never pointing down, but pointing upward like this will help the argon reach the joint, and for some reason it just helps pass x-rays. Now I did a little experimenting here. I'm going to go full pedal with 48 amps on this machine, and that gave me a 46 amp readout. So I went full pedal. You need a little bit less amperage for stainless steel than you do carbon steel. Also a good tip is to use one size lower in the filler metal diameter. So in this case I'm using an 045 filler metal. Base metal is 063. 045 seems just about right. I'm going to come up on the very end here in just a second and you'll see why those little extra button tacks come into play. I'll show this in slow motion in a minute. See, it gives me a little extra second to back off and not blow the end away. Now the D17 spec gives a lot of leeway in blowing ends away, which I, I really don't understand that. It's never a good idea to blow an end away. So I'm going to show this in slow motion here. This is half speed. I'm coming up on that end tack. I'm kind of like really eyeballing the left side of that puddle and slowing down, tapering off, letting it soak for a second, and then tapering off the amperage. And I, I know I'm going to get 100% penetration all the way end to end, and I'm not going to blow the end away by doing that. The reason I started in the middle and welded to the end, and now I'm starting on the end and going to weld to the middle, is this is how I used to require tests to be done when I was administering this test myself. We did an awful lot of backstep welding, and that's what this is when you're welding into a previous weld. We did an awful lot of it on parts to prevent distortion. One of the main one of the main skills in taking any test should be to not leave a crater crack when you have to terminate a weld. So this is the way we did the test. We required starting in the middle and then welding into the middle and tapering off without leaving any kind of crater crack or any kind of problem that would show up in x-ray. It actually worked out really well. Oftentimes in aerospace repairs, you're never welding more than a couple of inches anyway. Now, I used a 332 electrode here, and I got it kind of sharpened to a needle a little bit. I, I easily could have used a 1 16th. Would have probably been a better choice for a joint like this. But a 332 did fine. It's well within the range. As long as you get a good sharp tip on it, you're going to get a good crisp start. Let's pull it out of the fixture now and do a little quick examination, see if we got full penetration, see what's up. The Jazzy 10 did a great job on the welded side. The fixture did a pretty darn good job shielding the backside too. Jazzy 10 would be a great choice for a test like this. It's also a great choice for pretty much any stainless steel welding. Question is, will it fit your torch? Listen to this. If you're looking to upgrade from the standard torch hardware that comes with most TIG torches, you want to be sure that it's going to fit your torch. So how do you know? There are so many different brands, so many different numbers, it can get confusing. These are all 17, 18, 26 style torched. It doesn't matter what number, it doesn't matter what brand. If your hardware looks like this, you have a 17, 18, 26 style torch.
This Furic adapter kit for 17, 18, 26 style torches will make the Furic cups work with your torch, if that's what you have. That's another picture of it there. It's got two black insulators that come with it. Slightly different, one of them will fit. Now there's nothing really wrong with the standard hardware that comes with them. It's a bit long. The, the long tail is a bit long for real work. It's good for practice. Even when you shorten it up with a little button on the end, it, it, you can only shorten it up so much. But to get better gas shielding as well as just shorten up the overall length of the torch, this adapter kit will do it. You just swap out the white insulator with this different one here. Install the collet and collet body gas lens. I'm removing the o-ring because the ceramic cups are threaded and they don't need an o-ring and I'll just thread it on just like I would any ceramic cup. If you want to swap back to a clear ferric cup, just put the o-ring back on, moisten it, slide any clear cup over it just like that. And that takes a 17 torch and makes it much more usable. You get better gas shielding and you can use a longer stick out. 9 and 20 style torches are a little bit smaller. They use a smaller collet body not even an inch long. So if your hardware looks like this, you've got a 9 or a 20 style TIG torch. Could be air-cooled, could be water-cooled. They both use the same hardware. If you have a 9 or 20 style torch, all you need is this gas lens. It's a 45V44 part number for the 332 option. 332 is the most versatile size electrode. And that'll let you just thread a Jazzy 10 ceramic on there with no problem. And you can always swap back to a clear cup. As you can see, I slipped the O-ring down on the base of the gas lens, moisten it. Now I'm ready to slip on a Jazzy 10 cup or other clear cup. And for convenience, we put together a couple of combo kits, one for each torch type, that has a ceramic cup as well as a clear Jazzy 10 cup. Sometimes the job calls for one or the other, and it's really easy to swap back and forth. Once you have the adapter kit or the 45V44 gas lens, it opens up a lot of other options to you for other Furic cups. This is an 8 Pro cup and you can really see here how it's lighting everything up and you can see every detail around you, where you're going, where you've been, things that might be in your way. So once again, if, you're, if your hardware looks like this, you have a 17, 18, 26 style and you need a Furic adapter kit to make the Furic cups work. If your hardware looks like this, you have a 920 style and all you need is the 45V44 to make it work. Or maybe the more convenient way is to just get a combo kit that's got everything you need. Thanks for watching and thanks for your support.